Hi guys, thank you for clicking to my video. In the previous video, we discussed about the multinuclear NMR with its introduction and we did a brief overlook to the different categories of the molecules which are categorized for the stepwise understanding of the multinuclear NMR. In that, we have seen the different example of multinuclear NMR for the first category that is the NMR of the molecules with one type of concentrated nuclide. Now we will move with the second category that is the NMR of the molecules with two types of half spin that is concentrated nuclide. In this we will introduce with the example that is as follows where we have HF molecule. Here both this proton and fluorine they are half spin concentrated nuclei so when we do the proton NMR we will get the doublet signal for this one proton with the coupling constant of one bond that is 1 J H F similarly when you do the fluorine NMR that is 19F NMR we will get the doublet signal for the fluorine as because it will couple with the proton via one bond that is due to this one bond coupling constant 1 j f h to this we have two different kind of spin here that is proton and the fluorine so we are getting the doublet signal for the proton and for fluorine also we are getting the doublet signal so we will have the popel notation as a x system similarly we can move to another example where we have this molecule PS3 in this if we do the proton NMR we will get the doublet signal for the protons as because phosphorus and the proton they are attached with the single bond that is by a one bond so one bond coupling constant with one bond coupling constant we will get the doublet signal for the proton over here as it will couple with the phosphorus so both of this phosphorus and the proton here they are concentrated nuclei so we will get the coupling constant as like this over here similarly when you do the 31p NMR that is phosphorus NMR we will get the quadrate signal for the phosphorus it is because of this phosphorus it will couple with the all three protons so we will get the quadrant signal for the phosphorus in this molecule with the coupling constant of one bond that is 1 j p h now this quadrant multiplicity, sig multiplicity signal its intensity ratio will be as per the Pascal's triangle intensity ratio that is 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 here we have two spins giving doublet and quadrate signal decreasing the one value we will get the a with one subscript and quadrate will get x with the three subscript so ax3 system for the popel notation similarly we will move to another example we have this pf5 molecule here by the rule that is Benz rule we will get the structure of the molecule as like this where we will have the three fluorine which lies in the trigonal plane taking the equatorial position similarly two fluorine will be in the axial position in this PF5 molecule now we will see that two different types of fluorine that is two fluorine are in the axial position and three fluorines are in the equatorial position so we got here the fluorines environment that is fluorine is having the two different environment and here phosphorus is also another kind of nuclei which is having the hundred percent abundance that is it is also an concentrated nuclei 
Now talking about the nuclei, we have two different types of concentrated nuclei that is phosphorus and the fluorine. But in case of the fluorine, we have two different environments fluorine that is two axial fluorine and the three equatorial fluorine. Now when we do the 19F NMR, it is supposed that this fluorine with three equatorial position, it will couple with this phosphorus by a one bond, will get the doublet signal and it will also couple with this two fluorine in the axial position, will get the triplet signal. But at room temperature that is not happening. It is because of this molecule it is having the fluxional behavior. So at room temperature this equatorial and the axial they will be exchanging in a very fast rate. So at the room temperature we will be not able to distinguish between the axial and the equatorial fluorine. So when we do the 19F NMR at the room temperature we will get the doublet signal as because this fluorine at the equatorial and the axial position they seems to be same with each other due to this axial equatorial exchange in a very fast rate. So all this fluorine will give a 19F NMR at room temperature as a doublet signal by one bond coupling constant with the fluorine that is 5 fluorine will look similar that is they will be indistinguishable at the room temperature whether they are equatorial or axial we cannot distinguish between them so with 1 JFP will get doublet signal in the 19 FNMR at room temperature similarly when you do the Phosphorus NMR that is 31 PNMR it will couple with the fluorine by a one bond so 1 2 3 4 5 5 fluorine increasing one we will get the 6 state signal so 91 sorry 31 PNMR will get the 6 state signal for one phosphorus with coupling constant of 1 J PF now talking about the popular notation for this molecule at room temperature will get doublet sextet will get AX5. Now this molecule is showing the fluxional behavior when you do the NMR at below minus 100 degree centigrade we will get the exchange rate that is equatorial and the axial fluorine exchange rate is very slow at that time like the molecule will be freezed we can imagine at that time so we can distinguish the different types of fluorine that is two axial fluorine and the three equatorial fluorine so we will get the different signal for them when you do the 19 f nmr we will get the doublet signal for this two axial fluorine when it will couple with the phosphorus with one bond coupling constant and we will get the quartet signal when it will couple with the three equatorial fluorine. Similarly for this equatorial fluorine when it will couple with the phosphorus we will get the doublet signal and this axial fluorine are in the different environment than that of this equatorial fluorine so it will couple with the two axial fluorine we will get the triplet signal with the two bond coupling constant that is 2J F equatorial FXL. Similarly at below minus 100 degree centigrade we can do the 19 F NMR like this in which we will get the quartet signal for the phosphorus when it will couple with the three different fluorine which is lying at the equatorial position with the coupling constant of 1 J P F equatorial. Similarly we will get the triplet signal for this phosphorus when it will couple with the two axial fluorine that is via 1J PF axial. Now to this if we frame the popel notation then we have the three different kinds of spin in this molecule if we observe this very carefully we have the three axial sorry equatorial fluorine they are in the different environment than that of those which are lying at the axial position 
and the phosphorus over here it is entirely different spin so with that we will have a three different kind of spin that is a m x type of system so since we did an open notation up to three type of spin so we can imagine this molecule as like this in the triangular notation for the a m x m x system where we have single spin for a and two different spin for m so m2 here and three different spin for x type of spin so we'll have a m2 x3 that is we have a amx system where we can denote this molecule with a am2 x3 that is like this with this we will consider another example that is pcl2 f3 in this molecule only the fluorine and the phosphorus they are nmr active rest this two chlorine it is nmr inactive nuclei so when we frame the structure for this molecule according to band's rule we will get the structure as like this in which we will have one fluorine at the equatorial position and two fluorine will be at the axial position so we have two different kinds of fluorine in this molecule when we do the 19f nmr we will get the two signal that is for the two fluorine at the axial position it will couple with the phosphorus we will get the doublet signal and when it will couple with the another fluorine which is at the equatorial position we will get the another doublet signal that is via two bond coupling constant that is 2j f axial f equatorial similarly for this one fluorine over here it will couple with the phosphorus we will get the doublet signal that is due to one bond coupling constant 1j f equatorial phosphorus similarly we will get the triplet signal as it will simultaneously couple with the different two fluorine lying at the axial position via two bond so we'll get the triplet signal due to two bond coupling constant that is 2j f equatorial f axial so for equatorial fluorine we'll get doublet of triplet and for two axial fluorine we'll get doublet of doublet so to this we can represent the signal as like this here for the first signal that is doublet of doublet here if we consider that one bond coupling constant that is 1j f axial phosphorus is greater than that of this two bond coupling constant that is 2j f axial f equatorial then we can have this splitting that is here it is doublet due to this 1j f axial phosphorus and this single splitting that is single signal it will further divided into doublet signal that is like this here so we will get the doublet due to this single signal like this and for this single signal we will get another doublet which is like this here now talking about the intensity ratio we know for doublet signal we will get the 1 is to 1 here also for doublet signal we will get the 1 is to 1 so 1 into 1 will get the 1 that is 1 intensity for this and 1 into 1 will get the one intensity for this so one is to one intensity ratio for this doublet over here and similarly for one into one we'll get one is to one over here so we'll get one is to one intensity ratio for another doublet so we'll get the doublet of doublet signal like this in the 19f nmr for the two axial fluorine when we consider the one bond coupling constant that is 1j f axial phosphorus greater than that of the 2j f axial equatorial similarly 
we can represent the another signal that is W of triplet like this is splitting if we consider the 1 j f equatorial phosphorus that is one bond coupling constant greater than that of the fluorine fluorine coupling constant that is 2 j f equatorial f x zero then we will get the splitting as like this here 1 j f axial phosphorus so it is greater so it will come at first so first of all we have a doublet that is due to 1 j f equatorial phosphorus so we got the splitting doublet and further to that doublet we are getting the triplet signal due to this 2 j f equatorial f x zero so now considering that we will get this doublet further splitted into the triplet signal that is like this here 1 is to 2 is to 1 intensity ratio and this doublet signal we have 1 is to 1 intensity ratio now multiplying this 1 into 1 will get 1 intensity for this first peak similarly 1 into 2 will get 2 1 into 1 will get 1 so 1 is 2 2 is to 1 intensity ratio for this triplet signal and it can be represented as like this over here similarly to another site we are getting the triplet signal from this single peak of the doublet so we will get the intensity ratio as 1 is to 2 is to 1 1 into 1 will get 1 1 into 2 will get 2 similarly here 1 will get so we get the two triplet signal that is of doublet so it is called doublet of triplet here we considered the condition that 1 j f axial phosphorus is greater than that of the 2 j f equatorial f axial or f axial f equatorial similarly when we consider the two bond coupling constant that is 2 j f equatorial f axial is greater than that of the 1 j f axial phosphorus then we will get the splitting as like this over here if we observe them carefully we will get the first splitting that is triplet splitting where we will have the intensity ratio 1 is to 2 is to 1 and with that triplet for each splitting we will get the doublet signal from them so multiplying them we will get 1 into 1 1 is to 1 similarly 2 into 1 will get 2 2 over here so 2 is to 2 here also similar we will get 1 into 1 will get 1 1 into 1 will get 1 so 1 is to 1 so with that we got the triplet of doublet signal when we consider this one bond coupling constant f equatorial phosphorus is less than that of the f axial f equatorial we will see this kind of splitting in complex that is metal complex using one example as like this here that is the complex we have rhcl 3 f 3 to this complex we will consider only the 19f nmr spectrum of meridional isomer where we are assuming that the coupling constant rhodium fluorine is greater than that of the fluorine fluorine coupling constant so to this complex we will have the meridional isomer structure as like this where 3 fluorine will be lying at the equatorial position that is at the meridional position like this at meridional position and 3 chlorine at that meridional position so to this molecule we have two different kinds of fluorine that is this fluorine over here if you consider then it is at the environment of this chlorine at this side and one fluorine at this side and it is directly connected to the rhodium downside it is chlorine upside also it is chlorine 
Now with that if you imagine for this fluorine over here, it is having the fluorine at the one side similarly another fluorine at the another side. So these two fluorine are entirely at the different environment. Similarly when we observe this fluorine over here it is at the same environment to that of this fluorine over here. So these two fluorine we will consider as a second type of fluorine. So this fluorine we will be considering as a first type of fluorine. So when we do the 19F NMR we will get the two different signal for this molecule that is for these two different kinds of fluorine. So for this first kind of fluorine that is one first kinds of fluorine will get the doublet signal when it will couple with the rhodium. As you know this rhodium it's 103 rhodium it's 100 percent uh, abundance so it is having the NMR activity so it will couple with this rhodium. Similarly by a two bond it will couple with this two different fluorine that is of second type at once we will get the triplet signal by this two bond coupling constant that is 2J F1 F2. Another one for this second kinds of fluorine that is two second kind of fluorine will get the doublet signal as when it will couple with this rhodium and similarly it will couple with this first fluorine by a two bond will get the doublet of doublet signal. Now to this we will represent the doublet of triplet signal and doublet of doublet signal in the spin splitting that is like this over here. So first of all we will have the doublet signal that is for first fluorine we will get the doublet signal. So for first fluorine we are getting the doublet signal that is with the intensity ratio of 1 is to 1 for doublet signal and this doublet signal it is because of this the coupling constant that is first fluorine it is coupling with the rhodium we are getting the one bond coupling constant that is 1j f1 rh so that we will get this splitting doublet splitting now to this doublet splitting where we are having the further splitting that is triplet so doublet it will be further split into the triplet signal as like this the single signal it will further split into the triplet signal and this triplet signal will have a intensity ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1 multiplying this we will get 1 here 1 here 1 into 2 we will get 2 1 into 1 we will get 1 so 1 is to 2 is to 1 we will get the triplet multiplicity for this end of the doublet signal we will get the triplet multiplicity at this end and another triplet multiplicity at this end so we will get the two triplet that is two triplet signal for the first kind of fluorine over here in 19F NMR and that can be also pronounced as doublet of triplet we are getting the two triplets so it is doublet of triplet similarly to this another signal we can consider here that is doublet of doublet so due to this one bond coupling constant for the two types of fluorine with rhodium by a one bond we will get the doublet signal that is like this first kind, second kinds of fluorine it will split into doublet signal by this coupling constant that is 1j rhf2 and this doublet signal it will further split into another doublet signal due to this coupling constant that is 2j f2 f1 that is this one over here two bond coupling constant so we will get another doublet that is further doublet splitting from this two doublet sorry this doublet so from this single wing we will get the doublet signal that is 1 is to 1 air intensity ratio here here also 1 is to 1 so 1 into 1 we will get 1 similarly for this 1 into 1 we will get another 1 so we will get 1 is to 1 that is 1 is to 1 intensity ratio doublet 
for this signal over here and to this side also we'll get another doublet with 1 is to 1 area intensity ratio so we'll get the doublet that is 2 doublet that is doublet of doublet now with this example we got the splitting of signals in the second category of these molecules now we will move towards the third kinds of that is third category where we will see the nmr of the molecules with three or more than three type of half spin concentrated nuclei so in this third category we have the examples like the actual and the assumption based where in this actual we have the molecule like hpf2 in which all these three nuclei they are of half spin concentrated nuclei where in this assumption based we will take one such nuclei which will be having the dilute nuclei that is here in this example cs2f2 where the carbon it is having with 13c and 12c where this 13c is of dilute nuclei so in this molecule we will assume that only 13c is present so this is of totally assumption based with that we will move forward looking to the nmr signal to this molecule that is for the assumption based and the actual examples for this category to this molecule hpf2 when we do the proton and nmr we will get the doublet of triplet signal that is when it will couple with the phosphorus we will get the doublet and when it will couple with these two different fluorine we will get the triplet signal similarly when we do the fluorine and nmr it will couple with the phosphorus we will get the doublet and it will couple with the proton over here by a two bond we will get the doublet of doublet signal and again when we do the 31p and nmr we will get the signal as doublet and triplet signal with the fluorine now for this assumption based we will have this carbon it is of 13c type so treating that we will get the proton nmr it will couple with the carbon also it will couple with the fluorine two fluorine so when it will couple with this carbon over here it will get the doublet signal and when it will couple with the fluorine we will get the triplet signal with a different coupling constant similarly when we do the 19f nmr we will get the doublet signal when it will couple with the carbon over here by a one bond coupling constant that is 1jfc and when it will couple with this proton over here by a two bond we will get the triplet signal due to this two proton over here in 19f nmr we will get the doublet of triplet signal similarly when we do the 13c nmr we will get the triplet signal due to this proton and triplet signal due to this two fluorine so we will get the triplet of tri triplet signal in 13c nmr now to this if we discussed about the number of signal that is here if you see this molecule taking this molecule we have the proton nmr that is doublet of triplet so in this doublet we are getting the number of signal what we have seen in this splitting signal splitting that is for doublet signal we will get the two signal and for triplet we will get the three signal so this doublet it will further split into two different triplet that is what this doublet of triplet it means so when we multiply 2 with 3 we will get the six signal we can see that as like this over here what we have discussed before in the case of this splitting doublet of triplet signal where this two signal of doublet it is further splitted into the three different three signal that is to the triplet signal so overall we are getting the 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 signal so when we multiply this 2 that is doublet with this 3 
will get the 6 so similarly here also we can multiply this 2 with 3 so we'll get the 2 3 is a 6 signal for this similarly for this one 19 fnmr will get the doublet doublet will get the 22 it will get 4 signal and for this another one will get 9 31p nmr will get the doublet triplet will get the 2 into 3 will get 6 signal now considering this number of signal that is number of lines how it is appearing will see one problem related to the csr net exam that is this question has been asked in the net december 2012 we need to find out the number of lines in 31p nmr signal for this molecule over here here it is of the assumption based kind where this nitrogen over here we need to assume this as of 15n so when you do the 31p nmr for this phosphorus we have this proton over here it is of first kind of proton and this proton it is directly attached to the nitrogen and this proton over here it is directly attached to the phosphorus so this proton is in the entirely different environment than that of this proton over here similarly this protons over here they are in the different environment than that of this proton over here so these four protons are in the same environment now considering the 31p nmr we will have the protons that is this proton over here it is in the different environment so it will couple with this single proton we will get the doublet signal with this proton over here and this two fluorine it will couple with them and we will get the triplet signal similarly this nitrogen here we are considering only the 15n since we know that 15n is nmr active so this phosphorus will couple with these two different 15n so we'll get the triplet signal out of this two 15n similarly these four protons are in the different environment than that of this proton what we have already discussed so this phosphorus it will couple to this four protons by a two bond will get the quintet signal now for this doublet we'll get the two lines like this and for this triplet will get the three lines for this triplet will get the three lines and for this quintet will get the five lines multiplying all those will get the 90 so in this problem this option d is the correct one so with this if you like my videos don't forget to share it to your friends giving thumbs up right down below Thank you.